Well, if my uh, timing is right, today is Sunday, July 4th, 2021. For most of the world, that is just another Sunday, July 4th. But here in the United States, it is Independence Day. Actually, the anniversary of our, our Declaration of Independence uh, back on July 4th, 1776. Now, a lot of people, <laughs> including a lot of Americans, think that, boom, July 4th, 1776, we became an independent nation separate from Great Britain. A lot of people don't even know that much, even here in America. But in actuality, that is just the date uh, that was put in the Declaration of Independence that was actually signed either on July 2nd or July 3rd. But in any case, uh, it's dated July 4th, 1776. Um, the actual war, the War for Independence, or the American Revolutionary War, or the Revolution, as they would have just called it in Great Britain, um, depending on what source you look at, it either started in 1765, but by 1775, we were shooting at each other. But uh, we did not actually gain our independence from Great Britain until September 3rd, 1783. And uh, according to some people, we really did not gain our independence from Great Britain until quite some time later, basically after the end of the War of 1812, sometime in 1814. Uh, a lot of people think of the War of 1812 as just the continuation of the Revolutionary War. But in any case, so much for the history lesson for today on our Independence Day. What I thought I would do for this uh, video is uh, take a look at 13 American-made knives. And what I thought I would do with this is... Uh, take a look at some that I just thought were iconic and needed to be here and then some of them that are just my favorite knives that are made in the United States mostly is my favorite knives that are made here in the United States but uh, I thought I'd get them, get them from a, a wide variety of places and so without any more yapping let me move on to what these are by removing this flag here which is a uh, the Bennington flag, which is also known as the Fillmore flag. And I'm not going to go into the history of the flag. Uh, let's get a move on here. So I thought what I would start with is probably a knife that I think is the most iconic American made knife uh, you will ever find. Uh, now, I know a lot of people are thinking, on, well, that would be the case trapper, but I don't think so. I think the knife that really trumps the case trapper when it comes to just being an American icon is this knife right here, the Buck 110. I think probably more Buck 110s have been sold than any other uh, knife out there, American-made knife out there, at least in modern times. Um, including uh, case standard trappers. I think this knife is the one that you find. You can get this knife anywhere. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at Target. Um, it's It's been around forever. It's been often imitated, but never truly duplicated. And it is just the American knife, the Buck 110. So I'm gonna pop that one out right away and just go out on a limb and say that. And I know I really, uh, have never done a um, a review of the Buck 110, and I've never really talked about just how good of a knife it is. It is a, not a knife that I go around carrying a lot, but if someone were to ask me what is the iconic American folding knife, the knife that, would, that I would spit out right away would be the Buck 110. That would be what I would say. There is nothing more American than the Buck 110, um, at least when it comes to uh, folding knives. Yeah, your typical five inch lockback Buck 110 is the American icon of a knife. So let's get that one out of the way right away. Number one, Buck 110. 
Now let's move on to a couple other knives that uh, definitely need uh, a little talking about. My next choice is going to be right here. Be prepared. This is a Boy Scouts of America knife. Now this is one of the earlier ones. This is uh, all the way back from uh, the 1920s. So it isn't the first production Boy Scout knife, but it is the oldest one I have. It is the second run of Boy Scout knives by the New York Knife Company. You see here, Hammer Brand. Uh, and uh, it's just a classic knife. And nothing quite says Americana like a Boy Scout knife, especially a Boy Scouts of America knife. Yes, like so many things, the Boy Scouts actually began in Great Britain uh, and then came to the United States. But uh, when it comes to the knife, I think we got them beat. The Boy Scouts of America knife, like I said, this one's from around 1920 or so. Hammer brand, USA, uh, definitely an iconic American knife. Uh, when you think Boy Scout knife, you think America. Yeah, I know they're being made in China now, but at one time, nothing said USA like a Boy Scouts of America knife. Now, as long as we're talking uh, Boy Scouts, let's also get the Cub Scouts in here. Uh, and that is with the official Cub Scout knife. Uh, this particular one is the 75th anniversary one, so it came out around 1985 or thereabouts. It was made by Camillus. It is kind of unique when it comes to American-made Cub Scout knives. We'll go into that in a minute. But it is also just a very interesting pattern because, for the most part, this knife was really just used by the American Cub Scouts, the Cub Scouts of America. Yes, I do know the... Um, the Canadian Cubs also used it, but even the Canadian Cub knife was made by Camillus here in the United States. Now what makes this knife a little bit different other than the 75th anniversary shield is this is the only official Cub Scout knife that had bone handles. This one has a, a blue bone handle, dark blue bone handle. And uh, it's the only Cub Scout knife that I know of that was made that way. Otherwise, it's got your typical blades. You've got the uh, the uh, main spear blade with a half stop. Notice the uh, 75th anniversary blade etch going on. And then you have the um, cap lifter uh, screwdriver with the press here dummy lock on it. And that was something that all, everyone complains about is that they have the locks on uh, the tools but not on the main blade. But the reason for that is because of who's using it and that is little kids. And this is more likely to slip when you're twisting and turning and making a hole or using the screwdriver for those blades to close up on you than using the blade properly. So that's why... They had it locked up that way. So it's really an ingenious plan for a, a first knife for an American kid and the uh, Cub Scout. So, yeah, definitely an American icon, the American uh, Cub Scout knife. Now, my fourth knife is this big old honking knife here. And I actually think that this was made for Canadian forces or um, or Commonwealth forces during World War I. It might have been also issued to American troops in World War I. I don't know. But this is a, a Camillus-made um, um, clasp knife uh, that was typical uh, for use within the British Army and the Canadian Army during World War I. You got the really big... Um, uh, can opener here and then you got a main blade notice it's just the spear point blade going on this was not reprofiled this is actually the way the blade was made and then you've got the big marlin spike on the back side here it locks in place and this is um, it's either copper or brass which is really interesting. But if you noticed, everything on here has a half stop. 
the marlin spike had it the main blade had it everything has a half stop going on with it if you also notice it's not in the world's greatest shape the bone handles have separated a little bit but it's a really cool knife and uh it dates from world war one and that's why uh, i thought i'd break this one out um so my camilla's um army clasp knife most likely a uh, made for our allies in World War I, uh, either the Canadians or the British or Commonwealth forces, but quite possibly also used by uh, American uh, AEF, the American Expeditionary Force in World War I. And they continued to be used after the war. So now if my count is going correctly, we're up to knife number five. And I had to break this one out. This is my, uh, uh, emergency fish knife from world war ii this one is also made by camillus and notice it's a uh, steel throughout carbon steel throughout with a plastic jigged handle so i uh, got the hook remover down there but what you got is a nice blade going on there and this was uh issued to um army air force and uh, i'm sorry army air force and Navy pilots during World War II in their emergency gear. Um, and I would suspect mostly this was being used in the Pacific, not in the uh, North Atlantic. But uh, just a really cool knife uh, and a really uh, interesting way they added the uh, bell here. And notice it's up at the top, so it's out of the way of the blade. And this would so so you could tie it to yourself and not lose it. But um, yeah, my uh, emergency fish knife from World War II that covers uh, the two biggies, World War One and World War II. That brings us to Samuel Clemens, better known as Mark Twain. Samuel Clemens was a uh, riverboat pilot. Uh, before the Civil War and uh, turned author, and that's what Mark Twain stands for. It was basically a way of marking the depth of the river by saying Mark Twain, you're basically saying Mark Two Fathoms, so 12 feet, and that's what his name became, Mark Twain. And he was famous for writing a book about a guy named Huckleberry Finn. And Huckleberry Finn wanted a Barlow knife, and uh, that's why we have this knife right here. The uh, Mark Twain Barlow by Imperial Knife Company. Providence, Rhode Island, USA. Uh, this is just one of my favorite knives, mainly because of right there, Mark Twain. And like most Barlows, this was just an inexpensive knife that was a... Uh, sold in a clam package here in the united states and uh well it's just a classic barlow and what boy didn't want a barlow knife just like huckleberry finn so that really does speak uh americana all over the place you got the barlow knife and you got mark twain we're talking americana for sure there if i'm counting correctly we're up to knife number seven right there in the middle and I'm gonna go with this one here. And this is the Grandpa Knife by Camillus. And uh, it's because this is the knife that uh, most kids uh, remember their, their grandpa carrying, a Stockman. Now the Stockman knife um, actually began life probably in Sheffield, England, once again. Uh, and these were knives that were being made for the American market, but I'm sure they are also popular overseas too. But uh, they began life as cattle knives and then, uh, you know, being sold out west and everything. But eventually the pattern got smaller and uh, more popular. And just about every adult male in America at one time probably had a Stockman knife in their pocket at one time or another. I know I had a Stockman in my pocket at one time. Uh, and, you know, it's your typical Stockman knife. You got your clip blade up front here. On the other side, you got a sheep foot blade. And then finally, the spade blade. 
and even people who had no use for any of these blades like the fact that it was a nice light small knife with three blades on it and everyone seemed to carry a stockman and by the time this knife is coming out this is uh in the 1990s into the 2000s uh, well see what camillus did grandpa they gave it the uh a grandpa shield because uh everyone knew their grandpa carried a knife like this at one time or another so nothing really says uh, americana like the uh the three blade stockman and this knife i i know everyone talks about trappers today but uh this knife this is the knife that most americans had in their pocket at one time or another not the trapper the stockman some kind of stockman ended up in somebody's pocket at one time or another if you lived in america let's move on to knife number eight all right i'm going to do a little sorting real quick because uh, i don't want to get confused here okay those have been done we got more to do All right, you recently saw this one anyway, but I'm going to show it again, and that's because Genuine Stag. Um, stag is probably one of the most popular handle materials when it comes to American-made pocket knives. Uh, American pocket knife collectors tend to love Stag. Now, I, maybe I'm wrong, but... It does seem that way. Stag is king when it comes to American traditional knives. And this one is one of my favorites. I've shown it to you before. And it's the Junior Scout by uh, by Case. And uh, so it's got the little main Spearmaster blade. The uh, can opener here. The cap lifter screwdriver. And on the back side the punch blade. But really, what makes this knife such an American classic is the India Sambar Stag and the fact that it is made by Case. Uh, when it comes to American-made knives, um, not only is Stag king, but W.R. Case & Son is also king among the uh, knife collectors out there. So, what can you say to a genuine india sandbar stag case knife <laughs> it's truly americana okay well, let's face it you can whittle with any knife but not every knife is a whittler and not every knife is a case seahorse whittler uh, this is kind of like the pinnacle of whittler knives the uh, case seahorse whittler at least in my opinion this is one of my favorite patterns by case if not my favorite pattern by case well junior scout might be my favorite but this is the my favorite pattern by case that is easy to obtain um, the seahorse whittler and um, whittlers in general are kind of an american invention it is a take on the uh, Stockman pattern knife, but they kind of changed things around a bit. And what they did was they put the two small blades on one end, and they have the main blade working off of two back springs and dropping in between the two smaller blades. And so what you have, in the case of this knife, a Warncliffe blade, which is a blade that really migrated to America again from Great Britain on this knife and it's a relatively short blade considering the length of the handle but it's a perfect size blade for doing uh, woodwork and then the other two blades you have on the opposite end are a uh, coping blade that drops to the front side of the blade uh, the main blade and then a small pin blade that drops to the back side of the uh, main blade and that is a really the classic American pattern Whittler knife uh, but in this case is just done on a sleeve board frame and they call it a seahorse Whittler and uh, I don't know 
to me, this is definitely uh, an American icon. And if nothing else, it is one of my favorite USA-made knives, the Case Seahorse Whittler. All right, nine down, four to go. Let's break out number 10. And that is the Military Knife 818 or the MIL-K818 demo knife, uh, military utility knife, whatever you want to call it. It is the classic knife that has served uh, the U.S. military from, uh, well, 1944 or thereabouts, uh, possibly all the way up into present time. I know it was still being used uh, about 10 years ago. Now, this particular one is stamped USAF. This just happens to be my favorite, but uh, most of them are just stamped U.S. This was uh, one that would have been bought at the base exchange on Air Force bases. Um, originally, back in 1944, they were a lot of them were just stamped U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, and uh, notice with copper, I'm sorry, with brass liners, and then uh, the uh, scale here being... Uh, stainless steel but still having carbon steel blades now the reason these knives came about to begin with was uh, the need for a knife in world war ii in the pacific that would not fall apart in all the heavy heat and humidity because the bone handles and the black synthetic handles on uh, military knives at that time were just falling apart in uh in the pacific and they needed something sturdier and so they came out with a stainless steel knife now originally like i said they had carbon blades and uh, brass liners but eventually everything on the knife turned into stainless steel and that's what we have here and this one like is, is stamped usaf most of them are just stamped us united states um this one came out in 1993 um they were made from 1944, and I believe they could very well still be something that is sold on a military basis today. The uh, MIL K818. I know it still has a national stock number attached to it, so I know it is still available for the military today. So, truly an iconic knife. Um, like I said, this one is by Camillus. I believe the ones today are being made by Colonial. Uh, they have been made by numerous American knife companies, but truly also an American icon uh, for the U.S. military. Well, you knew I was going to break out a toothpick, and I thought of many toothpicks that I could break out, but I went ahead and grabbed my case, uh, a large toothpick. This one comes in at five and a half inches long. I could have grabbed a couple other ones. I could have grabbed my Shat and Morgan. I could have grabbed my Queen. I could have even grabbed my Baron Son. But I just decided to go with Old Blue here from Case. Because uh, I still think, uh, once again, uh, when it comes to American icons, uh, when it comes to knife companies, Case is truly the American icon of knives. And, uh, well, I had to have a toothpick in here. So this is the one I grabbed. My uh, navy blue case toothpick. I think I'm going to just set that up right there. Okay, number 12 is also one of my favorite knives, and that is my Great Eastern Cutlery Beaver Tail Allegheny. Also sometimes called a, um, a uh, Coke bottle, but before there were Coke bottles, these knives were known as Beaver Tail knives also. And which really makes it interesting to have a beaver tail or beaver for the shield and you see a beaver tail etch on the blade there. This is uh, by Titiute Cutlery Company, one of the brands of Great Eastern Cutlery and it features I think a cherry wood handle, nickel silver bolsters, brass liners and a 1095 carbon steel blade. And it's just a really beautiful knife. And, uh, well, Great Eastern Cutlery are knives made in the United States the old-fashioned way. And uh, they are becoming collector's items worldwide. Um, 
Do they rival Case in the collectability? Not yet, but they may one day. Um, I'm sure Case knives are definitely, more Case knives are collected than Great Eastern knives, partly because of the price and also because of uh, the length of time that Case has been around. Uh, but Great Eastern Cutlery is definitely trying to give them a, money, a run for their money. And they are just really fantastic, well-made knives. And uh, this one is definitely my favorite. I've only got about uh, eight or nine uh, Great Eastern knives, but <laughs> this one still remains my favorite, the, uh, the beaver tail. And that brings us to number 13. All right, last but not least is uh, number 13. And surprise, surprise, it is the Spyderco Para 3, uh, a modern folder. I obviously don't collect a lot of modern folders. And as modern folders go, this is my only USA-made modern folder. Now, it would seem that if you're looking at a... Uh, modern folder to represent the United States, Benchmade would probably be the best choice because, well, Benchmade has pretty much always been made in the United States. Uh, whereas Spyderco actually began life, I think, uh, as an American company making knives in Seki City, Japan, uh, and later started making knives in the United States. And, uh, well... Golden, Colorado, USA, Earth. So that is uh, kind of the way it goes with Spyderco. Um, originally making knives overseas and then uh, turning production to the United States. But believe it or not, a lot of American knife makers did the same thing. Uh, Camillus was first an importer of knives coming out of Germany. And several other companies did the same thing before uh, eventually uh, turning production to the United States. Uh, Spyderco continues to make knives in Japan, um, United States, and China even. So it is kind of an international company. Uh, and that is kind of what's going on with the United States. And you can expect that with, uh, with a country that is trying to expand its influence globally they would be doing production and uh, doing work in other countries too. Um, I will probably have to do a review on this uh, knife later. I really just got it two or three days ago. It was the, uh, I've been looking at picking up a pair of three for a long time. Uh, you know, will I be able to flick it open? Eventually I will. Uh, not an expert on these Spidey Flick. Um, the compression lock, what I can tell you about that is it's not left-hand friendly, but right-handed, it's great. You know, it's got it definitely drop shutty, you know, which is something that all the modern folder guys are crazy about. Lineup is not perfect, but, you know, it's a modern folder. It is the way that the United States is going today. And uh, I like it. So, representing all the modern folders out there, my Spyderco Para 3. You'll hear more about that in the future. But there you have it. A pile of 13 USA-made knives for Independence Day, July 4th, 2021. Hope you enjoyed it.
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pious. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.